I'm Cher Russell from mining.com.au and joining me today is Bruce Lane, the CEO of GTI Energy. Bruce, it's a pleasure to have you back on. How are you? I'm great, Shay. Thanks for uh, having me back. Uh, we have an exciting conversation to have today, but first and foremost, I wouldn't mind touching on some of the progress at your Low Herma uh, project over in Wyoming. You put an update out recently just to let everybody know what you've been doing. Tell me, what are some of the activities you've been working on? Yeah, Shay, we um, have been working towards a scoping study. Uh, we completed uh, all the field work activity. Uh, and uh, advised the market of that during February. So we did our um, metallurgical studies and hydrogeological studies. And so the next phase was to uh, confirm the process design for a processing plant and to complete the layouts of um, the bore fields for the mining part of the in-situ recovery process. So all that's uh, completed now and costed, and we're in the process of synthesizing that and getting it into report format so that we can publish it soon. Um, I wouldn't mind just delving into some of the technical terms that have been used in this update. For example, well field layout. Um, I'm not exactly sure what that means. When you're saying you're doing a well field layout, what is it that you are actually doing there on the ground? Yeah, so the mining process involves drilling uh, injection and extraction wells so that we can push a leach solution into the subterranean ore body and then extract it um, once the, the uranium mineral is liberated into the, into, the, into the liquid. So that requires a, a pattern on wells, um, which is, uh, they're essentially water wells. Um, and so we have to plan where those wells are gonna go, uh, how many of them are, there are, how, how far they're spaced apart. And then that's the construction phase, if you like, of the actual mine. Uh, so that's a very key part. It's a big, it's a part of a significant part of the cost in building the mine, and so it's key to being able to develop an economic study. And that, at the end of the day, is what we're doing here: is we're looking to establish a baseline economic model for the project uh, to show that um, it, it's economically attractive and worth spending the next part of the investment. Uh, I'm so glad you summarised it like that because there is so much work that goes into showing whether these projects are economically viable or not. Now, if you don't mind, I wouldn't mind just touching on the macro backdrop for energy at the moment. Uh, we're looking at some pretty tumultuous markets. Uh, we've recently seen uh, President Trump talk about coal and the benefits for the US economy. Uh, tell me, you've got your ear to the ground of what's happening with energy in the US. What are you seeing right now? Yeah, we're seeing... Um the Trump administration act on uh, what it said it was going to do prior to the election, and that's that um, focus on getting more firm, reliable, cheap electrons onto the grid in the US. And they're doing that for a whole bunch of reasons, not, not least of which is so they can maintain uh, a supply of electrons to the hyperscalers and data centers so they can stay ahead of the game there. Uh, but they also know that the grid is unstable in the US with the amount of renewables that's been uh, implemented. And so they're very focused on making sure that grid is reliable as a matter of national security. And then of course, to keep electricity as cheap as possible. So we're seeing him uh, put his best foot forward with coal and the EPA and the federal government has re removed um, objections that they had to new coal mines and new power stations. So it's a, it's a very significant move. And we, what we believe we will see is the same sort of approach for gas and gas-fired power stations and, of course, nuclear and nuclear um, uh, plants. So, you know, we, we believe that's going to be in the future. It will take time. The undersecretaries of energy, uh, the Interior and the EPA are just going through their uh, confirmation hearings now. So it takes time to get everyone in place. But policy is starting to roll out and we can see that happening. And we think there'll be some big announcements in the future for uh, for nuclear as part of that. Uh, listen, Bruce, thank you so much for explaining that to me. I really do appreciate it. I look forward to discussing some of these policy changes coming forward. Thanks for being here today. Great. Thanks, Shay. Good to see you again.